kids, it's Mrs. Zink here this evening, and we are going to listen to a great Venus flytrap book from your supply bag, and then we are going to finish planting your Venus flytrap plant. I hope you followed all the directions on your direction sheet for what to do before meeting with me. And then you'll be able to finish planting your plant in about 15 minutes. Are you ready? Let's get out our book in our bag called Venus Flytrap, a bug eating plant. Can you find this book in your supply bag? And then you can follow along with me in this story. I'd like you to open up your storybook and it shows you some really neat pictures of fly traps. Yours could get this big if you take really good care of it. Venus fly trap, a bug eating plant. And that's my title page. Now, I'm just going to skip a part to page four. Would you turn there now and follow along with me? The unhappy face of a victim. Look at this trap with a fly inside. Even a nimble fly is no match for the Venus flytrap's lightning fast super trap. The great British naturalist Charles Darwin called the Venus flytrap the most wonderful plant in the world. What do you think about your flytrap? Turn the page and read with me this time if you can. This plant can catch and eat bugs for its meals. Awesome. Look up here in your picture. Amazing. Scary. Do you see tiny hairs inside the trap? These are trigger hairs. If an insect touches them, the trap snaps super fast. And I noticed on a lot of the plants we gave you, they had these hairs. You might check your plant right now and see if you can tell what I'm talking about. The Venus flytrap's leaves actually close when touched. Let's try. Snap, it's so fast. Turn your page, please. This soil is poor and does not contain enough nutrients for the plants. And that is actually where our Venus fly traps were first born or first grew. They were planted in swampy bog areas like the picture shows you. Venus fly traps share the wet habitat with other meat eating plants like sundews and pitcher plants. And you have another book in your supply bag if you're interested in learning about other plants that also eat animals. I am a hoverfly mimicking the hornet's color and pattern. Do I look okay? See where this fly is? Can you tell? Mmm, delicious nectar. And this says marginal spines. The picture label is showing you what these are called. Be careful! If you disturb the trigger hairs, even in the slightest, the trap will shut instantly. What do you think is going to happen to this insect? Venus fly traps trigger hairs. Usually there are three trigger hairs on each side of the trap. When touched twice, not once, but twice, within 20 seconds, the trap snaps shut. It is so fast, even a nimble fly has no chance to escape. Nimble means quick. Now, look over here, and we have a picture label again in your story. Sweet nectar is given to attract a prey just below the marginal spines. It's a trick. You'll have to look closely on your trap to be able to see the nectar. And if you have a magnifying glass at your house, that might help. Here is a bigger picture. It's magnified and you can see some of the nectar that attracts the insects. The Venus flytrap has memory. 
it counts how many times a bug has touched the trigger hair. Once, twice, and snap. These tiny red glands absorb nutrients from the prey. And prey means what the Venus flytrap eats. Now, here's an experiment I talked to some of your classes about that you can do with a pencil after we get finished reading the book and you plant your trap. The experiment is called pencil snatching. Do the experiment yourself. You can use your finger too. Any volunteers? Not me, I'd use a pencil. Touch any trigger hair in the trap twice. Remember, you have to do it twice. Ouch! Wow, wow, see what happened to the pencil? You can try that tonight after you plant your trap. Pencil snatching, so much fun, let me try again. Remember, you must touch the trigger hair twice. Super fast, snapping, woo! This was someone else that did the experiment. The Venus flytrap loves plenty of sunlight. Summer leaves tend to rise up and are open, often slender and longer. And this is what your trap will look like if you put it by the window and it gets at least four hours of sunlight a day. Venus flytraps in the summer. So many hungry mouths waiting for some food to stop by. And some of the kids have been asking me if you can put your own insects in it. Yes, you can, but they have to fit inside the trap. If they hang out, it will cause the trap to die. I've been reading about that. So as long as the insect, soft bodied insect fits inside the trap, you're safe to do that. A Venus flytrap digesting a prey in the closed trap. Can you guess who the victim is? Look inside this trap. Can you say what insect you think the, the Venus flytrap has? It takes a week to 10 days for the Venus flytrap to digest the prey. When all the nutrients are absorbed, the trap opens slowly. You can see the dry remains of the victim left in the trap. The closed trap is sealed and its interior is filled with digestive juices, the shadow of the victim. You can probably see better in your book and I'm on page 21 if you wanna look there now. Now, this next part is very interesting. In our book on page 22 and 23, it actually shows you where Venus flytraps grow in the wild. They don't grow in West Virginia, here where we live. They actually grow in the South, in North Carolina and South Carolina. And Venus flytraps grow wild only in those areas of our country, nowhere else and their number is declining. That means we don't have as many traps growing in the wild as we used to. Venus flytraps are protected by law and you cannot pick them in a field, but no worries, you can get one from New Martinsville School, right? Or a local nursery or home center near you. Here it shows us the Atlantic Ocean and it shows you the areas where Venus flytraps actually grow in the wild. Um, let's see, it says Arthur Dobbs, the governor of North Carolina, discovered this plant in the year 1760. So we've known about Venus flytraps now for hundreds of years. This says, I'm on page 24 now, North Carolina in July. This would be this summer in July. It shows you some large Venus flytraps catching big insects. This says, it was a delicious meal. One hot summer day. After the meal is over, the trap opens slowly. The wind and rain clean the dinner table and the trap is ready again 
for the next meal. Now, if you get any traps that are black, have your parents snip those off. Um, but as long as they're not black, don't bother them. They should be able to catch an insect for you or eat one if you give it to them. Violent storms and heavy rain often hit North Carolina, which is a home to the Venus flytrap. Venus flytraps are seen submerged, that means down in the water for a long time, but they don't seem to mind at all. Some plant scientists, that they're called botanists, they believe that Venus flytraps actually used to live underwater. So rain does not close the traps, the motion and the rain hitting it. I thought that was pretty neat. They are a very, see down here, smart plant. They know the difference between rain and insects. Tonight's meal is a snail. Yummy. An evening stroll turns out to be deadly for the snail. And some of the kids were saying they have these around their house. This would be a good treat for your Venus flytrap if you can catch a small one for it. Delicious snail in the making. Gotcha. Dinner's ready. And if you look, you'll see the shadow of the snail inside that Venus flytrap. Now, I'm going to skip a couple pages. You can read back over them with your family. And I just want to show you here now, these are what baby Venus flytraps look like. So don't cut those off your plant because when I was putting them in your terrariums yesterday, I actually saw some babies growing on the side. So investigate that. Look and see if you have any baby Venus flytraps that look like this. This one is only one week old, down here at the bottom of page 34. And let me see, this says the one month old Venus flytrap baby is already hungry for food. So they don't have to be very big to eat an insect. The first trap of a baby Venus flytrap, tiny trigger hairs are growing in the trap. Can you see them? You can look here in my book and your book. Also, check your own Venus flytrap tonight. The length of the trap is two millimeters less than a tenth of an inch. So even those tiny ones could eat something like a little ant, those little tiny ants, not a big one if it's a baby trap. Now, skipping a couple pages again to the very back, and it shows you a bee that has got, gotten caught in the jaws of a Venus flytrap. And it says, help, this plant bit me. Now, on the back, when we get done tonight or sometime tomorrow on page 38, you'll want to read the Venus flytrap growing tips with your family so that you can keep your trap alive as long as possible. Now, it is time. Will everybody please get their Venus flytrap supplies ready? And in your directions, you are supposed to go ahead and soak your pellets in two thirds cup of faucet water or tap water. Then, do this with me if you're ready, I want you to peel off the outer coating of the pellets and just sprinkle it down like this. Now, you're going to have to help your parents clean this up because it may make a little bit of a mess here. I know I'm going to have to clean it up, okay? Go ahead and empty the pellets. Try to get them inside the terrarium and not on your parents' carpet. It will be a good idea. Then... Kind of um, put your fingers in your dirt and we want to um, get rid of the lumps in our dirt, okay? Now, on your directions, your direction page, I'm on the back now. If you want to look there and get your dirt ready, try to get the bumps out of it. It's going to be dirty. That's what we're doing, planning a Venus flytrap. Now, I can already see some little traps that are black. I'm not going to snip them off right now, but I will later tonight. 
Go ahead and loosen the roots of your fly trap like this. Some of the dirt might fall off and that's okay. Then just like planting a regular plant, we want to get the roots down into the soil. So make a hole with your hand and an adult might need to help you if you're having trouble. Then you need to make sure you get the whole root system down into the soil. And do you know what to do next? Those of you that plant regular plants at your house, what do you do next? That's right, you have to cover the roots. Let them get down in the soil and pat it easy. You have to be very easy with this and go slow so you don't hurt the baby traps because I'm sure you probably have some because I can see some babies on this one. Now, last but not least, take a look at your new terrarium. It will need four hours of sunlight or light from an overhead light each day to live. If you have a little brother or sister or a pet, this is a good idea. You can snap the lid on so they stay out of it. You don't want to push these traps on purpose because each trap only closes four or five times before it dies. So we want it to get some insects if it can. It won't hurt to do the pencil experiment on one or two, but don't do it on all of your traps because you want some left because I know all of you are so excited about feeding it insects. So save some to feed the insects to. Now you'll want to check your Vetus flytrap every few days and make sure the soil is moist. It needs to stay moist. We don't want it to dry all the way out, just like a regular plant. If it's too dry, it will, it will kill it. And that's the same thing with our traps. Now, tonight would be a good night to collect some rainwater. Ask your parents for an old bowl. Don't get their best dish. Put it outside and collect some water. Save it, and in a few days, when your plant starts to get dry, give your plant a little water. The directions say try not to touch the leaves of the plant. So when you water, try to go over on the edges and stay away from the traps when you do it. Now, let's say you can't get any rainwater. You can also use distilled water with no minerals. Some of the kids were asking me earlier in the week, what about bottled water? You can water it, but it's not going to live as long. The very best thing is rainwater. The second best thing to keep it alive is distilled water, but it has to say no minerals. Hey guys, I hope you've had a great time this evening reading your Venus flytrap book with me and finishing the directions for your plant. Also on your direction sheet, there are tips on the back for keeping your plant alive forever if you want to, if you take really good care of it. In your bag, we've also included this book. I knew some of you would be super interested now in other plants that eat animals. And guess what? This isn't the only plant that does. Read this book to find out what other plants eat animals. And last but not least, this book is called Seed to Plant. And it talks about plants that we would have in our area and how they grow. Have a great evening, guys, and I hope you've enjoyed all your buggy snacks. Let me know when you see me in the hall how your new Venus flytrap is doing.